So last week we were testing out that 52cc outboard motor by Saiken and we had it strapped to a 600 pound John boat and we were able to go nine miles an hour and I had so much fun. So I thought to myself, what if I strapped this thing to something much lighter? How fast would it go? So I got myself an Intex Seahawk 3 inflatable boat and their motor mount. So the Seahawk 3 is by Intex and it's supposed to be a three person boat. Uh, it's about nine feet long, a little bit longer. Um, it's got some oar mounts and uh, the reason why I got this one is the fact that it's got these motor mount fittings on it so I can strap a motor onto it. The Saiken 3.6 horsepower is the one I'm gonna go with. Uh, it came pretty complete, you know, it's, the boat itself, some oars, it even came with its own new pump, high volume pump, so it shouldn't take too long to inflate it, and the manual. So the motor mount by Intex is rated for three horsepower, but we are gonna use it on a Saiken 3.6 two stroke and see if it holds up. I'm hoping it would. It is made out of uh, plastic but it's very heavy and reinforced so we'll see if it works out All right, well, that was quite a workout. Uh, it didn't take too long, maybe like five, six minutes to fully pump it up from flat. And the pump actually fell apart uh, in the middle of wrapping up, but luckily um, the cap just unscrewed itself and it just screws right back on. So uh, it's pretty durable. The boat itself is much larger than I thought it would be. It's almost 10 feet long. There are three different fill ports. So this is the main one that you sit on. You fill it up over here and there's two different chambers. So this one you fill over here and then the outer one you fill over here. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just snap this cap off. You leave this one fully screwed in. It's a one way. So air is not gonna come out until you fully screw this portion out. So, for the pump itself, you have to use this adapter for the middle section where the uh, fill port is much smaller and then you use the largest one for the other two fill ports. This boat says that it's only rated for 1.5 horsepower, but we're definitely gonna at least double that and give this a shot. Sorry, I meant there were three different chambers one two and three it did come with some inflatable seats to use for the middle one uh, but i'm most likely not going to use that i do want to make a board like a plywood board that's covered in carpet to stabilize the whole raft just to make it more stable and easier to stand up on when we're fishing The oars are pretty simple to assemble. It's three pieces. This slides into here and that slides into this. Um, there are some clips that keep them in place, which snap to keep them assembled until you 
press it to unlock it. And then there are these rubber rings that you put on the oars themselves to keep them in place and sliding, keep them from sliding out of these oar holders or just keep them from sliding forward and back on these oar holders. But man, I love those. So in case this motor, our outboard motor fails in the middle of the lake, we have a backup. Now these things are to hold your fishing rod. There's one back here and there's one up front. There is an insert, so it's adjustable in sleeve size. But if you do have a skinnier rod like I do, use this one. So the rope that it came with is meant as a grab rope. So if you fall off the boat, you have something to grab onto whichever side you're at. So you feed it through the 10 different loops that go all around the boat and you tie a knot on the back to keep it in place and keep it secure. So when you grab onto it, the rope doesn't just fall out. Size wise, it's plenty of room for two people. I don't see three people comfortably sitting here. Uh, this is quite soft, so I can't see how this would be stable to stand up on if you're fishing. I am still gonna make a board, like a wooden floor with a carpet, so it's easier to stand up on and keep the raft from folding into itself. The motor mount kit looks pretty straightforward to assemble, pretty self-explanatory. This is the base plate where you're going to mount the motor. Uh, these two will slide up into these holes and we'll have the these locks keeping them in place. And then the two poles will go through these fittings and keep the base plate from moving forward and back. So this is what it should look like fully installed. These fittings, they face perfectly straight forward, so they are gonna be twisted. This is good because it keeps tension on these bars, so it keep them from sliding back and forth so easily. Uh, this base plate pretty much faces straight up and down. I went with the inner locking position for both of the, uh, for all of the mounting points to keep it as tight as possible. And I'm starting with the very, very top uh, height, just because this matches the John boat height that we last used to keep the uh, trolling motor at the same height as before. And yeah, I mean, it seems like it would be pretty stable. I do want to add a little bit more air to this, but all the knobs should be facing outwards with the metal washers in between so that the hardware fully seated in the lock position and yep, washers in between the aluminum uh, components and the plastic knobs. Next time we'll be doing the durability test right on the water. I'm also going to be making the plywood floor with the carpet to make it more stable. But stay tuned if you want to see it in action with the motor in the water. Make sure you smash that like button. And if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to my channel. But for today, this is going to be it. Thank you for watching.